What is going on today guys? Welcome to another episode of Code TV. Today I want to talk to you guys about catching a record, state record, bass, world record bass as possible, and you know beating your own personal record. It's a really great feeling to beat any record, so I'm gonna give you some steps on how to achieve that goal and you know what you need to do to get there. First thing that I stress when people ask me, you know. How is it that you like you can find the big bass? Well, you can't really just go around like, you know, you got your local ponds and everything. Not every pond obviously is gonna hold quality fish. Do some research on your lake. This year, I'm setting a goal. I wanna set my own PB this year, fish tournaments, whatever. But I have that big goal, which is to catch my own personal best fish, maybe even a Pennsylvania state record fish, which would be awesome. But what I've been doing since last year is I've been researching lakes around me, you know, um, history on big bass caught, um, people's success rates with bigger fish in that lake. You want to do research on your lake, make sure there's big fish coming out of there already so you know you know that lake can support that kind of a uh, size fish. Not every lake is going to hold that big fish. Do your research. Once you do your research and you find your lake, you want to target areas that you know big fish will hold up. Now, a lot of the times, all you have to do is find the bait fish, you find the fish, okay? One of the key places to check for big fish is points. A point is a simple place along a shoreline that extends out into the lake. They're great places to try year round, especially in the spring and in the fall. Some points will have a pretty steep drop, so a lot of the fish will be closer to shore most of the time. Um, some gradually go into the lake, like I know there's points that, you know, that can go out like 300 feet in like such a gradual fall that you know, they could be anywhere on that point. During the fall and spring, you can find the bass a bit shallower on the points, but in the summer, a lot of the bass do move deeper. Um, in the winter time, they also move deeper, you know, between 10 to 30 feet. And just remember this, the clearer the water, the deeper the fish will be, trust me on that. The next thing you wanna target is something like aquatic vegetation. By that, I mean like lily pads, hydrilla, anything like that, you know, some can be above water, some can be under. Um, you know, with lily pads, a great tactic for giant fish is frogs. You know, the bigger fish are going to be looking for those bigger meals. So they're going to, they're not going to waste their energy on stuff like minnows and whatever. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes they will hit those minnows. Most of the time they won't. They're going to be looking for the bigger meal. But regardless of what kind of vegetation you have, most likely every single forage in that lake is going to be in that aquatic vegetation. That's something that's really key during the summertime when the fish are deeper. I like to target you know, the deeper aquatic vegetation, a lot of the bigger fish hang out in that and stage up in that. And then one of my favorite things to do, if you guys don't know, is throw a jig. And my favorite place to throw jigs is one, the point. I love throwing jigs on points, but two is riprap. Riprap on lakes and rivers with sand, silt, clay bottoms, um, rocks will be placed along the shoreline so it prevents the uh, shoreline from washing away. Riprap is those rocks. You'll commonly find them around like bridges, docks, marinas, stuff like that. Those are great hiding places for forage, for shad, crawfish, anything like that. And a lot of those bass will be up on that riprap feeding most of the day. And a lot of the big bass move up on that to get those bigger shad and those crawfish. That's what the fish, you know, they call it the all you can eat buffet, the riprap. Now, I wanna to talk to you about baits. There's a 99% chance that you will not catch a double digit bass on a drop shot. It's possible. Um, it's happened, but if you want to increase your chance by a ton more, you're going to want to use something with a bigger presentation. So what I want to start off by saying is, you know, if you're out there throwing a Texas rig crawl, little packet chunk or whatever, or a tube or something like this, this little itty bitty thing, you're going to want to upsize. Now, one of my favorite tactics is throwing. I've caught numerous big fish on jigs. This thing has just so much bulkier of a presentation. It's got the crawl imitation still. It's got the skirt just making it flare up a lot more than something simple like a tube. Those changes in the bulkiness can help you get more attention to your bait. Bigger fish will pay attention to it longer and it can even drive them to biting that more because like I said, they want that big meal. That's what I'm trying to hammer in in this video is use bigger baits. The next thing I want to talk about is something like a swim bait. Um, this is something I'm getting into. I've thrown stuff like Kytex in the past. I've thrown these last year, didn't have too much luck. I've had more luck on Kytex. I'm getting a swim bait set up and you know, something like Kytex, don't get me wrong, they can catch big fish, but if you want 
to target those big fish specifically, you know, eight pounds plus, use something like a six inch HUD or Savage gear. Most of the time, the bait's bigger than, you know, six inches. They're gonna drive those bigger fish to bite because there's the big meal for them right there. I would definitely recommend getting into swim bait fishing. It's something pretty fun. Um, I haven't done much of it. I wanna do it more frequently. There's a lot of lakes around here that hold quality fish that would definitely hit a swim bait. I travel to a lot of lakes and I'm traveling to a lot this year where I could get uh, bigger bites. So yeah, up your presentation. I hope this video is gonna help you guys out on catching those bigger fish in your pond or lake. Uh, quick recap, do some research on your lake. Don't just go fish any regular farm pond. Make sure you know what's in there. There's gotta be structure. Uh, you gotta have the structure, you gotta have the forage, stuff that makes big fish. Next is you fish that structure. Find out what kind of forage is in that lake and match the hatch. One of the most important things, especially when those fish get bigger, they get smarter, match the hatch. You want your bait to look as realistic as possible. The next is don't be afraid to throw that giant bait, okay? You gotta throw that jig, you gotta throw the swim bait, you gotta throw the Kytex, you gotta throw swim jigs, anything like that. You know, bigger presentations equals bigger fish. There's no doubt about that. So guys, I hope this video helped you out. Keep on throwing, catch your personal best, that state record, even that world record. I hope this video helped you boys out. So I'll see you in the next video. Peace.